Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Ed. Today, we're going to be talking about Vivint Homes, so or Smart Homes, going with the ticker VVNT. In today's video, we're going to go towards due diligence, technical analysis, and what I think about this one. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So Vivint, we do have actually some information relating towards this one coming in towards the PowerPoints, but a quick overview on who they are. So Vivian Smart Home is a leading smart home company in North America. They deliver an integrated smart home system with an in-home consultation, professional installation and support delivered by smart home pros, as well as a 24-7 customer care and monitoring. Now, it's dedicated to redefining the home experience with intelligent products and services. Vivian services approximately around 1.7 million customers throughout the US and Canada. And they do have multiple different US or news releases. And you're able to see that the total revenue for quarter one was around $343 million with total subscribers around 1.71 with a retention rate of around 88.2%. They do have different events coming up. For instance, uh, the last one was as well on May 26th relating towards the 49th annual global technology media. And they do post more events on this tab. Now, going on towards their presentation from August 3rd, 2021, relating towards the second quarter of 2021 results, they do have some good information on there that I do want to go on first. So starting off, they do have some of the key highlights includes the appointment of a new CEO, David Bywater which is a seasoned executive with 25 years of leadership experience, a former CEO of Vinit or Rivent Smart Home, which knows the company and the market really well brings valuable knowledge and experience from Vivint Solar, where he was CEO, expanded solar offering with strategic partnership with Freedom Forever, and completed global refinance of debt and reducing the annual cash interest by $50 million. So for the quarter, you have $355.2 million of revenue, which is up 17% year over year, then double the growth rate of the PY period, and $156 million of adjusted EBI today, which is up 4% year over year and 76% versus quarter two 2019. It also originated over 121,000 new subscribers, up nearly 13% year over year, and net subscriber acquisition costs per subscriber of $70, down 89% year over year. The net service cost per subscriber is around $10.03, with service margin of 79%. The attrition rate declined by 210 basis points year over year and to a 12 quarter low of 11.6% generated $78.4 million of cash from operations, ended with $345.2 million of cash in hand. In terms of the total subscribers, you have around 1.78 million total subscribers in 2021, which represents a growth of around 10.6 from the previous year. Total MRR is around $114.8 million, compared to 13.8% from the previous year, and AMRRU and is a 2.6 increase from comparison from last year. And in terms of the quarters ending with June 30th, you're able to see that on 2021, they had around $355.2 million. Previously, last year, 303.9, and in 2019, $281.1 million. In terms of the six months ending in June 30th, it's $698.5 million currently, an increase of 15.1% from last year and 8.9% uh, compounded from 2019. And quarterly or quarters ending June 30th, 2020 uh, and 2021 and 2019 for the adjusted EBI TDA, you're able to see that there has been a little bit of a decline in the margin. So the current margin is 43.9%. Previously, it was 49.6%. So even though the, the total adjusted EBI TDA is currently 156 million compared to 150.6, million you still see that there is a little bit of a decline here in terms of the margin itself the six month the six months ending june 30th you're able to see that in millions it's still higher again but the margin is sitting at 45.5 percent compared to 47 percent of last year in terms of new subscribers they do have new subscribers both coming into dh dth and nis so both parts of the services and the average proceeds from collection of sales has also increased to $2,144 compared to $1,485. Now, net service cost per subscriber has also increased to $1,003 compared to $993 from last year. 
and the net subscriber acquisition cost per new subscriber has decreased to $70 from $630. And you're able to see as well that the attrition rate trend has is actually going downwards and currently sitting at 11.6%. And moving on from there, some of their financial outlooks for 2021 includes contractual and recurring revenue provides long-term visibility and predictability. Vivint Premier end-to-end -end smart home platform is relevant in any type of economic environment and customer engagement levels remain high. And optimistic about the rest of the year despite potential headwinds related towards covid supply change and constraints and inflation in terms of guidance we are reaffirming original guidance of total subscribers of between 1.8 and 1.85 million subscribers total revenues between 1.38 and 1.42 billion dollars and adjusted ebi tda is between 640 and 655 million dollars during the time it took to host this call, there was around 57 million events processed in the cloud by Vivint Operating System, 148,000 live videos view from the apps and panels, plus another 81,000 views of record video. And basically, all they're trying to do here is showing you how fast and how massive their operations are, that during the call they hosted, they were able to go through all this stuff. And then they did have questions and answers and some balance sheets we're going to go through in a second. But if you like this video, make sure to click the subscribe button on the bottom right corner and leave your notification buttons on. Also, don't forget to drop a like to this video and you can join our Discord totally free in the description below. Now, in relations to last year, the financial outlook for 2020, including 95% of revenues recurring, provides long-term visibility and predictability, continuous improving in key metrics were needed, and average subscriber life is around 8 years, driving significant lifetime margins. Now, the previous guidance was around 1.62 to 1.68 million uh, subtotal subscribers. As you get to see, that has actually increased in this one here relating for this year, around 1.8 to 1.85 million. And the total revenue was 1.23 to 1.28 billion dollars in terms of the previous guidance in 2020. And you're able to see for 2021, they're aiming between 1.38 and 1.42 billion. Now, the previous adjusted EBI TDA was between 555 million to 565 million. You're able to see that the adjusted EBI TDA outlook for 2021 is 640 to 600. 55 million. Now, if we were to compare their market cap, their market cap is currently sitting around $2.4 billion, with their current sales sitting around $1.3 billion for the year. And if they were to actually go ahead and meet that $1.38 to $1.42 billion in terms of total sales, which is very close to the $1.30, you're going to probably be closer to around $1.6 price over sales. The current price over sales ratio for the SP500 is 3.26. So it does actually sound like this one might be a little bit underrated when compared to the SP500. Now the price over book, we can go back towards that and take a look into the assets, but this is not available right here. And we're going to take a look into their total assets and total debt in a second. Now they did have multiple different news, different things going on. For instance, Vivint's help rates over $1 million for the giving back school program, uh, supplies and STEM educations to students in need. So that's really a nice thing to see the company do that. $1 million is still significant, even though it might be peanuts for bigger companies. And Vivint enters into strategic partnerships with Freedom Forever to offer an integrated smart energy offering. And then past that, you have Vivint issue statements on ADT patent infringement lawsuit that was still going on from around February 21, 2021. And the proceeds of that where ADT was being sued, it says order granting non-party defendant ADT LLC and defendant alarm.com incorporated motion to transfer related cares pursuant um, to DUC IVR 83-2 of Delaware. Uh, the court finds that Vivint V versus ADT is related to the above captioned lowering the number of cases in that transfers to the undersigned is appropriate under the circumstances pursuant uh, to gives you the number DUC IVR 83 2G and the court therefore grants the motion and directs the clerk of court to reassign Vivint V ADT to the undersigned judge. Vivint V ADT will not be consolidated with Vivint V Alarm Incorporation. C order for details signed by the judge that was actually on august 12th so that gives you an update towards that 
and Vivin Smart Home announced his leadership transition plan. If you do recall, he did have the, the in the current presentation relating towards the CEO. So that was already gone already ahead. And you're able to see some of the fourth quarter 2020 highlights compared to what you've seen previously. And you do see that we do have a good amount of increases overall from the fourth quarter of 2020. So that still remains bullish on the trajectory of growth. Now, in terms of assets, you're able to see that their total assets, and this is in thousands, is currently around $2.97 billion. So that all in all is good. Now, in order to get the price over book, we need to subtract the debts. So all in all, but just keep in mind that their total current liabilities is $856 million and their total liabilities overall is $4.6 billion. A lot of that is notes payable net uh where you're able to see that that takes almost half of the chunk almost 50 percent in terms of all everything you're able to see it's through almost 3 billion compared to 4.6 billion in total liabilities i usually like my companies to have more assets than liabilities but that's not the case at this current moment so the total stockholder deficit is around 1.63 billion dollars so the price over book can be very very tricky here so i'm not going to go through that just because uh it is a little bit tougher but the price over assets you're able to see that it's lower than one which is a good thing but again price off or the total assets versus liabilities i do prefer total assets to have higher so that's one of the only drawbacks that i can find about this company in terms of the net losses for three months ending June 30th, you're able to see that they have recorded a net loss of around $74 million compared to 2020 for around $156 million. Their main thing is that their loss of, of operations is sitting around $37 million compared to $43 million last year. And I think this is a big part as well of depreciation and amortization that does take a lot off that 392,000 of expenses uh, that is currently at 40, $149 million. And there is, or it really appears that there is a quite of a gap between the revenue and their estimated net losses. Their net losses is not looking great. You need a net income for a company this big around $2 billion in terms of market cap. So keep in mind, that this is kind of a weakness It's probably going to take them out say perhaps a couple more years in order to go ahead and reach the positive side based on this trajectory that you're seeing you're seeing from 2020 to 2021 they were able to reduce it by around half but a big part of that is not coming in from loss from operations but in relations towards increasing the revenue by around 50 million dollars that's your biggest uh, part of the pie and decreasing loss from operations and they need to continue doing that increasing revenue and decreasing expenses and you can able to you're able to see kind of a pathway towards a net income rather than the net loss currently uh, that is accompanying this one and another thing is institutional buyers. Institutions generally are looking mixed onto this one. Goldman, Goldman Sachs decreased their position by 10.3%, but you're able to see other companies, for instance, such as uh, this one here, Paramedic Portfolio Associations, adding 11,200%, and Vanguard adding around 8% additional, so total shares of around 4.18 million shares. So all in all, it looks mixed on the institutional buyer's part. Let's move on towards technical analysis now. From a technical analysis perspective, we're able to see that some of the moving averages are not looking the best. They're looking a bit bearish. And that's understandable because I guess relating towards the latest news towards earnings and a bit of the market slumping on Friday and continuations of this one really going on from almost $32 down to this almost $10 level. That might have indicated on the moving averages, which only takes in consideration previous price points that this is a bearish movement. So don't take that much to heart, but the William percent R in the relative strength index does show that this one is highly oversold and the MACD is reaching on towards the zero, indicating maybe or perhaps that there is a negative trend starting in this one again and momentum has slumped below zero. What does that mean? It really means that in the short term, you might anticipate more of a drop in the stock price. This is also backed up by stochastic fast and stochastic slow pinpointing downwards. The current Bollinger bands and the moving average bands gives you an indication about momentum and volume points. And you're able to see that the significant resistance or it's expected to trade up to 1385 currently and 1133 on the support. In terms of Fibonacci tracements, what you're able to see here is that there is significant resistances sitting at 1406, 1748, 2026, 
$23.03, $26.97, and $32. The only support on the Fibonacci retracements is the A51. However, on a price line action, you're able to see that there's a very critical support point at the 1186. Below there, it's 1095. Below there, it's around 1007 to 10 dollar range. It's kind of a range there. And then 946, and then around the 851. The current resistances, you're able to see that there are around 1228. Above there, around 1330. Above there, 1418. Going up to $15. And then up to around 1630. And then going up to 1672. And then upwards to closer to 1699. And then 1836. Going upwards higher to 1976 and 2022. And then going to 2124. And then upwards to 2295, 2375, 2512, and up to 2797. Comes to the question to Ed. What do you actually think about this one? Well, from my own perspective is that they are very close to that $10 level. Their sales are actually pretty good. They're on the level to reach a net positivity. Just got to keep in mind that they're not positive, net positive currently. They're a net loss. And they're increasing their revenue, decreasing their expenses. They're on the trite trajectory right there. It's hard to pinpoint a stock price where the sales are there, but the total assets, debts aren't really looking as good, but they're still trying to do their best to achieve that net positivity. It's a little bit of a mixed view that I have on this one. I do think that this is kind of a, one of the stocks that you got to wait and see if they're actually going to be able to pull it up. But if I was to have it or if I was forced to uh, give an opinion onto this one, I would say I would really like to see this one succeed. And I think they might be able to, but it's going to take time. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure you mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe and like and have a wonderful day. Now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that gives picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just think we think about swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one feel free to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day